Yes, it's becoming irrelevant. It's becoming irrelevant. People are running, flocking to places where they could get magic and they're paying high prices to get magic. They're paying high prices to get magic. They're paying high prices. You know why? And it's our fault because we're going home and laying down. We're ignorant and the, our ignorance is not forcing us to run to wisdom. See, you know when you haven't discovered purpose, when you are comfortable with ignorance. See, when you have ignorance and you know it and you can still go to sleep with it, it means you've learned to live without it because you've discovered a job that's not looking at your ignorance. It's funny when you have ignorance known and you can go to sleep with it, but when you know that there's something I need to know in order for my life to become greater than this, you can't sleep and you will seek wisdom. You will seek it, but it seems like the seeking of wisdom has become a thing of the past. I want to seek the most accurate prophet. Now we have to, we have to market prophets who are accurate. We got to say he's accurate instead of transformative. Now we're choosing accuracy over transformation. You understand? How accurate is he? If I listen to him, can he tell me what I need to know without me telling him? So that means he's the new psychic in the name of Jesus. And some of us are looking for psychics in the name of the Lord so we can hear what to do without seeking the Lord. The thing is, the path is in you. The path is in you, but it seems like we don't have the stamina or the endurance or the patience for transformative thinking. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Transformative thinking. Let me hear you say transformative thinking. Transformative thinking. Trans thinking that transforms habits. Instead of just saying, I thought about what I needed to do. It's like, no, I'm going to seize what I need to do because I can't afford to go to sleep ignorant anymore. And some of us are going to bed ignorant every week. And the more you can sleep in doubt, the more your bed will be made of it. The more you can rest in doubt, the more you'll create a bed of it. The more you can sleep in ignorance, the more you will establish a bed of it. The more you sleep in fear, the more you will create a bed of it. The more you can sleep in blindness, the more you sleep in darkness, the more the light will shut off. You understand? The more you sleep in fear, the more courage will run away. Where it'll run away because we don't have the stamina. And I'm finding us we have hunger but no stamina. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some of us have a hunger for change but no stamina for it. We have a hunger for it. We have a, we we're experiencing poverty of it, man, but no stamina for it. When and when you have the stamina. It'll make you leave the hunger to find where food is. Not another church because you don't have time for Sunday to Sunday transformation. You need a moment by moment assistance in your vision. And God is raising up modules and centers of thought, home groups and everything. That's not Sunday morning, not a thousand field, but he's saying run to it because that's where you'll find wisdom. Run to it. Go to it. That's where you will find it. That's where you will find it. This remnant, this remnant of transformative thinking, not just a remnant of people beating tambourines and playing a keyboard. And, and no, 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 no. Where do I discover my life? Where do I take my purpose where I can be mentored in it? Where do I take this treasure where the authenticity of my life can be developed around it? The stamina. I'm telling you, there's no such thing as magic. There's no such thing as a magic verse. There is no such thing as a magic strategy. There is no such thing as a magic verse, guys. No such thing. No such thing, no such thing, Mark, no such thing, Yvette, Jason, Jim, Steve, Kathy, Bridget, those of you on, Darren, no such thing, no such thing as magic, Cornell, no such thing, no such thing. Now, we know it, but we got to take our lives to it. We got to stop going home doing nothing. 
We got to stop buying books that are not read. We got to stop writing notes that have not turned into books. We got to stop singing to ourselves. We got to stop playing to ourselves. We got to stop. We got to get somewhere so somebody could pull on you. Somebody needs to put a demand on you, but we're breaking at the responsibility because we don't like the personalities of the teachers. We don't want them talking to us too hard. Don't talk to me too hard. Sometimes the intensity of a prophetic voice is based on the intensity of your purpose. Sometimes teachers will speak to you according to the degree of what you were born to be. They're not speaking to who you think you are. They're speaking to what you have not yet lived. So when somebody's voice raises up, they're not fussing at you. They're speaking to what hasn't been made alive yet. They're speaking to what you haven't walked in yet. And some of you are quitting and becoming familiar and quitting your post because you're getting mad because somebody spoke to you hard. But I'm going to tell you something, beloved. They're speaking to who you are and not what you settled on. They're reaching in you, but we don't have the stamina for this breaking and this shifting. So we're running and staying home alone and losing money and losing credit and running back and forth and not knowing who we are because we don't have the stamina. We don't have the endurance. We got the hunger, but don't have the endurance. So you just can't keep reading everybody's post and everybody's prophetic word. You can only like so many Facebook things. You can only like so many Facebook videos. There's going to come a time you're going to have to step in it and become it. You're going to have to step in this fire and become it. Because somebody's going to have to look at you in the face and say, this is the way to do it. Now go back and do it again. We hate correction. Go back and do it again. Go and do it again. You did not think that through. We don't have the stamina. We lack the communication skills of talking with leadership, not just pastors, but speaking with people who have the capacity to bring your purpose into fruition. And there's more to purpose than being at church, being an usher and a deacon. I have nothing against that, but it's more to destiny than Sunday morning. Some of you have a universal worldwide purpose in business, medicine, the arts, in, liter in the literary world, in the music world, in the business world. You have uncommon, uncommon purposes of things not yet alive. You were not born to just follow the thread of, of workplaces and genres and industries that's already established. Some of you have genres unheard of. And because you have an unheard of purpose, you need an unheard of teaching. You need teaching that's never been heard. So you can produce a business that's never been seen. You can't always produce something that's never been seen by teaching that's been sitting here all along. So some of you are uncommon teachers. You're teaching things that's never been heard. And people are saying, what is that? Well, it's not for you. It's for people who got something that's never been born. The kingdom is for people who have things that's never been born. And if you got a purpose and if you got a work that's never been heard, never been heard of, then you need a voice that's never been heard. You need the stamina for that. You need the stamina for it. Sometimes you got a work that's never been seen, but you want a voice that you could relate to. And you can't always seek voices you could relate to if it's going to birth something you've never seen. Because if you keep hearing what you're familiar with, you're going to keep producing what you've been familiar with. But in order to produce what you've never seen, you got to hear what you never knew. And if you hear what you've never known, you're going to go through a process that you never heard of. And you're going to be trained to have feelings that you never knew. You're going to be recalibrated in ways that you never knew. You're going to have authority that you never knew. You're going to have to understand personalities that you never knew to see what you never seen. You have to see what you've never seen in order to produce what you never thought you would. Raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying. But most of us don't have the stamina. We don't have the stamina for education that we never had. So some of you, be patient. Yeah, Cairo Center is something that most people never seen. And some of you have some things that's never been seen too, but I can only speak for here. We, we, we teach what you never knew. 
We have students that you never know. So if you want familiar education, this ain't the place for you. If you want a familiar mentoring, this isn't the place for you. If you want familiar stuff, I want to hear what I heard over at, the, at my church. This is not the place for you, but we're going to give you what you never heard so it can produce what you never seen because you've been feeling feelings that you never knew you could feel. You got visions nobody never seen, so you need discipleship nobody ever felt. You understand? You don't have familiar truths for an unfamiliar vision. You understand, guys? So you're going to be moved in ways you never thought. And your mind is going to be shifted in ways you never imagined. It's going to be shift because it's, it's going to be shifted in ways that you never imagined, but you got to break loose. You just can't keep going home, sitting down and going to bed. You can't just keep doing it. You can't just do it. You got to you got to you got to move forward, guys. And so many people are quitting. They can't stand it. So because there is no stamina for the divine, the earth and the world is falling into a vicious cycle of sameness. And the more the world falls into this vicious cycle of sameness, these issues are going to remain. These issues of abuse and poverty and racism and prejudice. We always say, what's wrong with the church? It's not about the church. Our personal lives hunger sameness. It's nothing wrong with the church. Oh, there is an undercurrent in the heart of many that hunger for sameness and convenience. When we all hunger for safe, same, and convenient, we allow the status quo to remain. And as long as the status quo remains, we have the same vicious cycle of tolerance and stupidity and ignorance, the same diseases, the same storms. The storm factors don't change because the status quo and the atmosphere is the same because we have a hunger for sameness and safety. We like safe and same. Because we like safe and same, everything gets fatter. The status quo finds a law to remain. And the status quo says you can't move me because everybody's voted me in. Our heart votes in the status quo and the status quo of toleration becomes our new president and king. It's not a demon. It's our heart for safe and sane. There is an election going on in every moment and we have voted in the status quo to find a sacred place to live. And when the status quo finds a sacred place to live, we can't move it because we voted it in. How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? So we have to vote it out by way of our action. We have to take the hunger to a new level of action. See, if we're hungry but don't have stamina, we're still voting in the status quo. And so we can't move it because the status quo says ignorance is the new law. Ignorance is the new good. Ignorance is the new job. And these things or these visionary schools and these visionary assignments are irrelevant. It's not warfare that we have. It's not the devil coming against your work. It's inconvenience coming against your work because you are trying to do something in a generation that won't allow it. And the scripture says Jesus could do no mighty work because of their unbelief. Well, most of us are living in geographical locations of unbelief. So therefore, your seed of possibility isn't growing because we're living in a geographical area of unbelief. So what's to come next? Some of you are going to be asked to move. The spirit is going to uproot some of us and send us to the geographical location where this vibration is necessary. He's going to send us where the vibration